Okay, good morning everyone. My name is Lillian and I'm Serena. I'm Pablo. And our topic was, should there be reforms in the prison system? So what we're going to go over first is living conditions in the prison system. So first topic is prison labor. So prison labor is legal in about 37 states in the U.S. and multi-million dollar companies like Nordstrom and Unicor use it to help produce their products that they sell, obviously. And this normally wouldn't be a problem, but thing is, prisoners are paid under minimum wage, like way under minimum wage, and they're given no safety regulations and no benefits, so they're given nothing in return for the work that they do. So this is essentially just like a form of labor, slave labor in the modern times. Another concern is supermax prisons. Now, a benefit of these supermax prisons is that they help reduce the risk of death or injury of employees in these facilities, but they cause inmates to have no activities, no jobs, and no education or no kind of way to rehabilitate themselves and get ready to reintegrate into society. And inmates in these supermax prisons are often released back into the general public without any attempts to help them reintegrate, which can be detrimental to both the inmate and society itself. Lastly, for living conditions, there's solitary confinement. Now, in solitary confinement, inmates are put in small windowless cells for 23 hours a day and are given little to no contact to the outside world or the general population of the prison. This can lead to effects like trouble eating, inactivity, which can also lead to pains in the neck, back, and abdomen, which is very detrimental to the human body as a whole. All right, so I'm going to be coming, covering the prison system effect on mental health. So as Lillian said before, um, inmates kept in solitary confinement have little to no contact with like other people. And um, because of this, like they have reported suffering from mental health issues such as depression, anxiety, or paranoia. They can also experience oversensitivity to normal stimuli, which could lead to um, issues sleeping and can prevent them from returning to the prison environment due to the fact that they will overreact to all of the things going on around them. Um, because or one third of the state prisoners report like not receiving or, sorry, one third of um, state prisoners report receiving um, treatment while incarcerated. But this is due to the fact that um, prisons are extremely ill-equipped to um, treat mentally ill patients because they have extremely long waiting lists for um, programs that tend to prioritize those um, re-entering society sooner. And often prisons prioritize um, stabilization over true treatment of the illness, meaning um, staff prescribe pills to um, mentally ill inmates just to curb their behavioral issues instead of routine treatment of the, um, of the illness to rehabilitate them. And because of this, inmates who show little to no symptoms of um, mental illness such as those with like anxiety or depression are usually denied medication completely, leading to their conditions to worsen. So um, nearly two, wait, hold on, sorry. <laughs> um, because of this lack of health care, um, Release addicts and inmates, like mentally ill inmates, turn to return to their normal destructive behavior, which leads to two thirds of them being reincarcerated within three years of their release. But it seems that um, inmates who sh suffer through like the longest sentences struggle the most reentering society because they find that has left them like in way in the past with no job, money, house, or car, leading to homelessness. Okay, so one major aspect of the prison system is private prisons. Uh, so, one of the main arguments for private prisons is that they save money. Uh, however, one finds really unclear data regarding this. According to some figures, states can save up to $15 million per year, but according to others, they can lose uh, more than 1000 per inmate per year. So obviously, th there's a conflict in this data. Furthermore, uh, there's hidden costs that diminish these savings. For example, private facilities can refuse to take in expensive inmates, leaving uh, the governmental facilities to have to take them in and take care of them. And finally, there's questions regarding the ethics of saving. Uh, for example, private facilities could cut corners on inmate uh, medical and mental care, and they could hire unqualified staff in order to pay them less. So this leads us into the living conditions uh, in these facilities. But one of the uh, arguments uh, for private prisons, again, uh, was the, the competition argument, which um, stated the competition uh, between businesses would lead 
them to try to one-up each other, which would lead to an improvement in living conditions. However, there's a flaw with this argument because only two businesses really dominate uh, the private prison sector, which means there's a lack of a competitive environment needed to foster this kind of improvement. And uh, there's a combination of high inmate to staff ratios, untrained and underpaid staff, and a lack of men mental and medical care, uh, which notice all of them are cost-saving measures. Uh, this combination leads to violence and escapes, which makes private prisons an unsafe environment. Uh, one of the main uh, arguments against private prisons, uh, or one of the main concerns, is the conflict of interest. And there is indeed one. Uh, facilities obviously need a certain number of inmates to operate, which leads to the creation of lockup quotas, uh, which are basically contracts with the local government uh, that since the local government sends people to prison, uh, the contract says that if they don't send enough, usually 90 to 100 percent, to fill a facility, uh, they will have to pay for the missing inmates, which obviously creates an incentive to arrest more people, even uh, if it is unjust. So finally, for some lasting effects of private prisons, uh, here we can see the violent crimes have decreased over the past few decades. Uh, however, the prison population has soared. So uh, why is this? Well, uh, part of the reason is the war on drugs. Uh, the war on drugs means that basically we have really strict sentences uh, regarding nonviolent drug-related crimes. And this is part of the reason why the uh, prison population is so high. However, this doesn't tell the whole story, as another big part of this is lobbying. And uh, basically, private prison companies uh, have spent millions of dollars encouraging tougher legislation minimum sentences for reincarcerated people, and uh, tougher laws regarding nonviolent immigration and drug-related crimes. So obviously, this really highlights kind of the problem with uh, private prisons, as they provide an incentive to arrest more people and increase uh, the incarceration rates unjustly. All right, so taking all this into consideration, some implications that we need is some major reforms are needed to like improve the system, even though there's going to be a strong resistance to change. So some of the solutions that we propose are required rehabilitation programs to help uh, uh, make inmates be able to reintegrate into society, an end of prison labor and proper pay for inmates' work, an end of solitary confinement, confinement, and finally a profit cap for private prisons to discourage overpopulation. So limitations to these solutions include a lack of funds to help implement these changes, difficulty in managing these facilities in which the changes are implemented, and ways that these facilities can still find ways to cut corners that would be detrimental to the inmates or the employees. a lot of kind of unclear data, as I said, uh, with the savings, because since they're private, they can hide a lot of the information. So it was really hard to find some of the info that was kind of crucial to the presentation. OK. So describe an argument, Savannah, um, from one of your peers' individual report that made you think differently about the team solution. Well, um, Pavle spoke about like how um, prisons are like have incentives to like bring in more prisoners, which is unjust, so that like kind of affected our solution and um, saying that they shouldn't have that extra incentive to bring people in unjustly. Okay. Um, so reflecting on the count on your team members' work, uh, which one had the greatest impact of your overall understanding? I think Savannah's had the greatest impact on my overall understanding because it helped me realize that the prison system was unjust because it detrimentally affected the inmates in more ways than just the ways that they lived or how they got sentenced and such. Oh. All right. Thank you.